do you have headache? So if I ask, yeah, so if I ask how many of you have headache today for the frequent audience question, please do not raise your hands. <laughs> and do not get up. OK? Again, uh, we are making one more attempt to streamline our audio, video, and the presentation. In the meanwhile, uh, many of my friends and colleagues, when we discussed, said, why are you talking about headache? Is it such a common symptom in pediatrics? So what is, you, what, what is your take on that? Yes, it is. Nowadays, yes, it is. Thank you. So there are two important reasons for choosing this particular talk. Ah, excellent. Thank you, Suraj. So now I have the control in my hand. So I've chose this topic for two important reasons. And first being, we are focusing on purely on symptomatology. And headache is one area where symptoms are 90, 95% will give you the cause. And you don't have to worry about getting more things done. On the other hand, you will be surprised that almost 5% of pediatric population suffers from migraine. And during the talk, I will tell you that migraine is not the most common cause of headache in children. So you can imagine how common this complaint can be. And we are not talking about the same child having recurrent headaches. So you can imagine the number of times that the child may come to you. Sorry, that is my fault, not Suraj's. So what do you want to do when a patient comes and complains to you of headache? First thing you want to know is, yes, yes. You want to make sure that there is, this is headache. OK. This is going to sound funny, but in the next slide, when I come further, I will explain on what I mean by identify headache. You want to obviously make sure. So again, whenever a symptom comes, you want to make sure, like uh, in the previous talk, Dr. Tushar Shah said, whether it is BPH or an overactive bladder. You must be able to differentiate that and don't rely on one particular symptom. You want to always rule out a serious or an urgent problem. When we discussed history taking in child with a painful limb, we were talking more of finding the cause of arthritis. When we are taking history for headaches, we are not only looking to find out the cause, whether it's a primary or secondary, or the common types, whether it's migraine or tension type headache, or simply called tension headache. It's also important to differentiate what is the subtype, severity, and any management that has been offered till now to the patient. So migraine is with, with aura or without aura or with any unusual presentations are all important. But when the patient asks you any question, they will only have two questions. Sub, doctor or doctor sub, depends on what is your age. They will say, sub theek hai na, chinta ki koi baat nahi hai. This is the question I think is omnipresent and all of us face this question from almost every patient. But in, in headache, they are only interested in knowing this answer to this question. Does my child have a brain tumor? And it's not funny, because you will be surprised at how many times we land up doing MRI, even after reassuring and convincing them once, twice, thrice, and write the indication as parental anxiety. But it's simple to find out. If you want to be convinced, make sure that there are no abnormal neurological symptoms and that this is not a progressive headache in form of progression in severity. If you make sure that these two things are taken care, then you are almost not dealing with any major intracranial problem. So we go to history now. And since this is a talk on symptomatology, we ask ourselves a our first question, how do I identify headache in a child? Of course, it's easy when the child will come and say, I have headache. That's not very difficult. But a toddler, uh, an infant, say a one-year-old, one year who is banging his head on the mother's chest, or he is banging his head on the pillow, he, could be, uh, he or she could be having a headache. A toddler who cries incessantly for no reason would prefer to sit in a calm and quiet place. Remember, toddlers never like calm and quiet places. 
And if there is any place which is calm and quiet, you put a toddler inside and it won't remain the same. So if a toddler wants to sleep and becomes better after that, please think of migraine or headache in that child. Also important to remember that headaches or migraine can present in various forms in pediatrics. It could come with cyclical vomiting, it could come with recurrent abdominal pain in children, it could come with excessive crying. So it's important to know that this is a headache. How do I find out, uh, sorry, so we go on next to say when this headache started, how long this headache has been, whether the frequency is increasing or not, whether the severity is worsening or not. You will be surprised that now all pediatric patients who get hospitalized also have a pain score. So we have few smileys, or actually they are non-smileys, from 1 to 10. That is a face with grimaces of various category. And you can ask them to mark themselves. You can ask them simple questions like saying, is it worse than before or less than before? Or you can ask, is this the worst headache ever that has happened to you? That way you can come to know that the severity is increasing. It's important to know what is the type of pain. Slightly bigger children will tell you that it's a pulsatile pain or that it's, a, so it's like somebody is pressing my head or is it as if my headband is very tight. So that is a compressive pain. That is what you see normally in tension type headache. If you see a throbbing pain, you will see it more commonly in migraine. Location also will help you differentiate. If you get in pediatric, it's slightly different than adults, and I will show you a slide for that. So if you get pain which is localized in the front, that is bifrontal, temporal, or bitemporal, you are more likely to be dealing with migraine. If it is at the back, that is neck and the occiput, then you are th thinking more in terms of tension type headache. Just as in limp, associated symptoms are very important, and that will give you a clue whether this is a primary headache or a secondary headache. So what do I mean by primary headache and secondary headache? Very good. So it's correct. So secondary cause, uh, it's because of a secondary cause, whether it be extracranial or intracranial, whereas primary is because of the problems of the brain in the form of either migraine, tension type headache, etc. There is no history for migraine complete without aura. And if you go for bigger children or adolescent, almost 50 to 70% of them have aura. Commonest aura in children is visual aura. And they see flashes of light and flashes of bulb going around. It's not localized to one place and it's diffuse. Sensory aura in the form of numbness or feeling of uh, something crawling over your body, etc., which are more common in adults, are not so well visualized or so, no, not so well perceived in pediatric. It's important to know what is the day, what is the time of the day when they're getting headache. Morning headaches or headaches which wake up children in the night, middle of the night, are always ominous. As well, compared to that, headaches which occur at the end of the day or middle of the day after the school gets over are more likely to be primary headaches. <clears throat> Sorry. When we talk about triggers, between migraine and tension type headache, triggers are distinctly different. Migraine usually has sleep deprivation, food, sun, stress, etc. And the common food which are implicated are, anybody? Chinese, so that is monosodium, monosodium glutamate or ajinomoto as we call it. Chocolate, cheese, and red wine. Okay, so yeah, so whatever is has high tyramine content is likely to trigger a headache, migraine headache. Family history is very important. On the other hand, sorry, tension type headaches. The stressors are problems in the school, problems at home, problems with friends. It could be a new school, new house, new friends. A friend who is making fun of them, somebody who is bullying the child. If there is a fight in the house, if the social environment in the house is not very comforting, there is a death of the near and dear one, any of this could be a trigger for tension type headache. 
Family history is very important in migraine because as I will tell you, as I will show you further, if you get a migraine history but have no family history, please go further and make sure not to just ask a question, ghar mein kisi ko sardard hota hai ki nahi. If somebody says answer as no, first of all, don't believe him. What I'm trying to say on a serious note is migraine equivalents have to be inquired. Parents and family may not have typical migraine, but they can have symptoms of migraine variant. Okay, so let's look at the pattern. Since we are talking about recurrent headaches, by the time you take history, you will, you will form a certain uh, pattern in your mind about what you are dealing with. If you get history of first, which does not fall typically into a recurrent headache category, but if you see a child who comes with single headache, which is very, very severe, it's a red flag, and we'll, you will worry about some kind of intracranial pathology. On the other hand, if the child has headache all day, on most days, for almost one and a half years, are you worried about this headache? No, you are not so much worried about it. It's a tension type headache is more likely. On the other hand, if there are recurrent severe headache once a month for almost two years, an important point being without progression in severity, then you are thinking in terms of migraine. The, it, though the last two things look similar, if you see, this one has more number of headache, the tension type headache, but it's not as severe compared to migraine, which, have less free, which are less frequent, but are more severe. On the other hand, if somebody gets headache every month, was getting headache every month, which became every weekly affair, now almost every day that person is getting headache. Serious, very good, so serious. So we are looking at some kind of intracranial pathology, probably an SOL. If you have a child who had an episode or a period of headaches, which went on for almost 10 to 12 days, two months ago, and is now completely normal since last two months. Okay. So the answer would here be sinusitis. Okay. Uh, what I'm going to show here in this one single slide is on differentiating points of migraine and tension type headache. Fortunately, if you see, it's more like a mirror image. If you have high frequency, you think of tension headache, shorter duration, tension headache, tightening or pressing, then you consider as tension headache. On the other hand, if it is unilateral, severe, associated with nausea, photophobia, phonophobia, and possibly aura, you will think in terms of migraine. Since we are addressing this audience who is taking care of adults as well as pediatrics, and I have tremendous respect for that, because when I read your talks on 50 musketeers, which are now 100 musketeers, I'm really impressed because I really don't follow many of those things which are adult-oriented. So just for the benefit to give you a comparison, adults almost always present with unilateral headaches in migraine, whereas children, when I mean children, I'm not counting adolescents, they are usually have bilateral headaches. It's usually on the bifrontal region. Their duration is shorter. And the type of visual aura that they get are more like flashes of light compared to scotomas that you normally get history in adult patients. Also, if you see, if you ask for history further, in pediatrics you will not get a particular field in which they will get visual aura. They will just randomly get it everywhere. But in adult population, you will get scotomas which are restricted to one visual half. Sensory auras are much more common in adults compared to pediatrics and unusual presentations like variation or variations are more common in adult. If the child, we'll skip this, we have taken care of this. So if the child wakes up at night, has morning headache, feels better on sitting up, and is worse on coughing or straining, please think of an intracranial cause, and that would be a point to worry. Just reiterating this concept of red herrings, as Dr. Tushar Shah has mentioned, if you find something 
which tries to distract you from making a diagnosis, then consider it as a red herring. To give you an example, children are brought with history of minor trauma and subsequent headaches. Do not let that trauma sway you from the diagnosis of other forms of headache rather than any significant intracranial cause. Same way, almost all children who come to you with recurrent headaches would have either gone to the ophthalmologist or will be going to them soon. The only refractive error which really can give headache is astigmatism. Okay? My ophthalmology friends are nodding and I am happy for that. Vertigo, on the other hand, will make you investigate for a labyrinthine cause, but remember benign paroxysmal vertigo is not only common feature in adults, but even in pediatrics, you will have a child who runs and holds mother's hand and says, I'm feeling giddy, or child will go round and round thinking he's trying to stabilize the, wall, stabilize the room. This is the last one is a very rare one, but just pointing it out, in infancy, you can have a child who will have transient torticollis and which could also be a feature of migraine. On the other hand, most important to remember red flags. So any child who is less than five years, please, please remember, any child less than five years, if he says or she says, I've got headache, it's a red flag. Anybody who has focal neurological deficit, anyone who gets first severe headache, progressive headache, headache on awakening, wakes up with headache in the middle of the night, all these are red flags. I know I'm repeating this, but I want this to stay, and that's why I'm repeating this. What I want to emphasize is, if there is a history of migraine, but there is no family history of migraine, please take it as a red flag and investigate further. So to conclude, again I'm repeating, red flag if the child is less than five years. Tension, headache, and migraine are the most common causes. If you get a headache which, are, which is mild but increasing in frequency, think of tension type headache. A severe but infrequent headache with a child who is normal in between headache, think in terms of migraine. And last but not the least, headaches with increasing frequency and severity with associated symptoms, consider it as a secondary headache, most likely to be an ominous intracranial cause. Thank you for your patient hearing.